G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here. Welcome to the 12th episode in our Tottenham career mode series here in FIFA 20. We are in the early stages of the January transfer window and we have some business that we desperately want to and desperately need to get done in today's episode. But if you guys do go on to enjoy today's episode, make sure you leave a like on the video. Also, if you're new around here, bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button down below. Would quickly like to apologize for the lack of episodes over the past two days. You could probably tell in the previous episodes and probably still tell now, my throat gets absolutely destroyed in certain episodes of this from getting too screamy and too passionate. So every so often I've got to take a little bit of time off just to recuperate the voice, rest the voice, but I've had two days off. The voice is almost good to go. We're going to jump straight back into it. But before we get carried on with today's episode, we have a press conference to take care of. So let's head to the media room right now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the press conference here. Episode number 12 of the Tottenham Career Mode series. Once again, a big thank you to everybody that left comments in the previous episode. If you would like the chance of having your press conference question answered in the next episode, make sure you leave a comment down below. Below. The first question in today's press conference comes from Jaden Owusu, who says, as Callum Wilson is going down to the championship and has been linked with Tottenham in real life, would you consider signing him? Look, I can 100% understand why he is a transfer target for Tottenham, especially with Harry Kane's injury history over the past few years. But for me personally, Callum Wilson at the moment is not a transfer target for the pure fact that I would rather develop someone like a Troy Parrott in that backup striker role. I mean, there's not too many opportunities for someone to even get game time over Harry Kane at the moment. And I'd love it. I'd rather think long term and have someone like Troy Parrott who has stepped up and get that game time. But I'm not going to knock the idea of signing Callum Wilson, but at the moment, it isn't in my plans. Devo4 says, after Toby Alderville disrespected Southampton after scoring against his former club, are you going to take any action against the Belgium centre-back? Not a chance in the world. Whether Toby wants to respect or disrespect his former club is entirely up to him. Me personally, I absolutely love it. It shows how much that goal meant for him and how much it meant for the crest that he wears on the front of his jersey. I will never knock anybody in any aspect of life for having passion towards what they do. So tell me, Toby Alderville, if you want to run around the field bloody naked, if it makes you feel happy after scoring a goal, bloody go for it, mate. And finally, Fun Unlimited. What a positive username. He says, what are your thoughts on the center midfield of Los Celso and Harry Winks? Do you think it needs some upgrading? I absolutely love using these guys together. Now, it's a big question because Los Celso is still only on loan here at this career mode. Of course, in real life, he signed the permanent deal with Tottenham, but when you start up career mode, it has him here on loan. So whether I go ahead and sign him on a permanent deal next season is a big question mark. At the moment, I'm definitely leaning towards it. He's been quite strong for us and has made some incredible attacking displays. But I know for a fact that I am so damn impressed with Harry Winks. He has been so good for us this season. And honestly, at the start of the season, he wasn't one of my starting players. But at the moment, he's playing better than Ndombele and is getting the starting role over Ndombele. So Harry Winks and Lo Celso in the midfield together, I absolutely love it. Whether we need upgrades or not is a question that we're going to have to ask ourselves later. But for this season, definitely keeping these two together. So lads, thank you once again for your press conference questions. Let's jump right into the rest of episode number 12. As you guys can see, we've got a very, very jam-packed January. We've got uh, Carabao Cup semis at both ends of the window against Wolves. We've got Liverpool at home. We've got Watford away, Norwich at home. So a lot of games to take care of. Still way waiting on some offers to come in for Hugo Lloris as well. I want them to come in so we can actually get something going in the goalkeeper department. But I have shortlisted a few options for other positions, which I will get onto soon. But before we get any further into that business, we're going to play the first leg of our Carabao Cup semi-finals 
at home here against Wolves. We are honestly in such a good position to set ourselves up for a shot at ending Tottenham's title drought. I mean, they haven't won a trophy in so long. We are two games away from getting to a cup final. We've got to take care of business here in the first leg at home. Wolves definitely not an easy opponent. The other semi-final, as you can see, is between Arsenal and Liverpool. I would honestly love a North London derby in the Carabao Cup final. So here is our lineup for today's game. Not taking things lightly, rocking a fully strong side except for in the midfield. Gedson Fernandez starting in the midfield and Ben Davies coming in as well. But besides that, it's virtually full strength. And for a look at the Wolves starting 11, Rui Patricio in there. They've got Otamendi. Who else they brought in? They brought in Klich. Dama Traore is there as well. Again, it's not a side we can take lightly at all. They're rocking a five-back formation too, which ain't fun. Oh, Deli Ali, yes, we win the 50-50. Come on, Harry Kane going to Gedson Fernandez. No real support in the midfield. We're going to go back to Ali. He's looking for a shooting opportunity. Deli Ali down the line to Bergevine. He's going to hold it up nicely. Going back. I see you, Fernandez. We're going to go. Gedson, not still follow up, son. Bergevine running up the line here, going. Kane through there to Deli Ali. I see Getson Fernandez, but it's open like the Red Sea. And Deli Ali's going to slide in there and provide us with the lead. I was honestly looking at laying it off to Getson Fernandez. And I think the Wolves defense had the same idea. And before we realized, it just all stopped going. Like, They'd taken all their attention and focused it on Gedson Fernandez. Willie Bolly not given any attention to Deli Alley. And our top goal scorer for the season extends his tally to give us the lead. They're on the attack. You're looking for a quick equaliser. I've overcommitted there and we've been caught on the back foot. And that's an equaliser for Wolves. That all comes down to me just overcommitting resources. Mitch, I hate this celebration. Can we eliminate the celebrating with the manager celebration in FIFA 21, please? Because the CPU does it when they've equalized. Your score, it's not like you've won the game. That's all from me, though. Overcommitting with Sanchez. It's a beautiful finish from Moutinho. And I've got to put my hands up and take responsibility. Good tackle there in the midfield from Gedson Fernandez. Maybe an opportunity just before halftime. Looking to slide in. Harry Kane. Who's going to score it? Harry Kane on the stroke of halftime. Puts us back in front. Beautiful stuff. But I've got to give so much credit to Gedson Fernandez. Who made the tackle to open that play up. And just like that, we reclaim our lead here in the Carabao Cup first leg semi-finals. We've got a free kick here after some great passing play. I'm honestly going to try getting this one out here to Ben or Sergio Roberto, I believe it is. It's going to go. Roberto hitting it. Ah, oh, it was worth the attempt. <laughs> Nicely read from Sanchez. Come on. Going to go here to Hyung Min Son. Son going to Fernandez, who's had a great game. Going to go to Delhi Alley outside the box. Oh, I thought that one was destined to end up in the back of the net. He put his absolute laces through that one. I am going to make a substitution here. However, got to think forward to the Liverpool game on the weekend. So, going to save the legs of Hyung Min Sun and give Ryan Sessing on a cameo for the last 20 or so. Ball being spread here. Deli Alley going to Winks. Oh, get in front of a Winksy. He did. Oh, saved. Oh, get the follow-up. No. I'm just surprised Winks even got the shot off to begin with. Here we go, Deli Alley going here. Ball being spread around. Gedson Fernandez. Going here, Deli Alley. I see the overlapping run. Going through Winksy to make it 3 1 is exactly what he does. And that is a huge advantage to have at this moment. A 3 1 lead. Harry Winks has scored that many goals for us this season. Honestly, one of the best players in the team, in my opinion, on this FIFA. But that is a tidy finish there to make it 3-1. Come on, lads. The fourth goal would be absolutely brilliant. I might go for the long shot here with Harry Kane, who forced a good save out of Patricio. Come on. One of our final opportunities, potentially, for this first leg. Would love to make it a 4-1 lead. Get to it, Sessignon. 
Ryan Sessignon looking for some support. He flicks it over. He goes to Gedson Fernandez, who goes to Deli Alley, who takes a brilliant touch. Deli Alley to make it 4 1. Hits the post. Harry Kane dragging it back. Gedson Fernandez. Finesse. Oh, into the gloves of Patricio. We could have and probably should have made it 4 1 there. But that was a brilliant first leg performance there in almost complete control, except for that one little stuff up where they got the goal. But we head into the second leg at the Molyneux with a fantastic, fantastic performance. So right now, this is the situation in regards to our budget. About 25 million or so to work with, and then around 87,000 pounds or so to work with in the wage department. But of course, we can change that either way. So I'm going to go and show you what I'm currently thinking. So of course, last episode, we did explore the possibility of bringing in Gianluigi Donnarumma, but we worked out even if we sell Lloris, we probably won't have enough money to go in for the Italian shot stopper. I've seen this name, Andre Onana, floating around the comment section quite a lot, of course. A highly rated young goalkeeper from Ajax. A more affordable option than Donnarumma, but still pretty expensive, even if we do sell Hugo Lloris. I also think we need to bring in a new defensive reinforcement because we have sold out of real and we have been caught a little bit short in the defense because of fixture congestion. Now, three names I've seen quite often. Nathan Ake, who of course has recently been relegated with Bournemouth in real life and has been linked to clubs like Tottenham, like Man City, even like Liverpool. Now, Joachim Anderson was a name I saw float around a little bit, but as you can see here, the player has recently joined the club and won't move again. But then Max Ahrens overnight has been strongly linked with Tottenham. So I'm considering going in for him at the right back spot. But the only reason why I wouldn't go in for Max Ahrens is because we already have Boyd who can play center back and right back as the reserve. And I think we desperately need a higher rated center back more. So for me, priority number one, option number one is Nathan Ake. And according to our chief executive, we could get him for as low as 21 million pounds. So I'm going to go ahead here and negotiate with Bournemouth. Let's go see what we can do now. I think we're going to be talking to Eddie Howe. Yeah, there's Eddie Howe. Justice for my boy, Eddie Howe. I wonder where he's going to go and manage next. But I want to get Ake on the lower end of the spectrum. So I'm going to say 21 million pounds for the Dutchman here. Oh my god, are you kidding me? My chief executive has played me. My chief executive has goddamn played me. What? Okay, so we're going to have to wait a few days now before we can go and talk to Bournemouth again. But I was not expecting to get laughed out of the room like that. God damn it, chief executive. Also, fellas, I can't remember if I showed you in the last episode or not, but... We have received our Champions League round of 16 drawing. And we've been drawn up against Barcelona. Spurs versus Barcelona in the round of 16. I mean, that's going to really show to us what we've made of. The fixture congestion is real though, lads. And only a few days after our Wolves game, we have a huge, huge clash here at home against Liverpool. For the most part, I would say we've been pretty good at home this season, but today we're going to have to be extraordinary at home. Liverpool are currently second in the league at this point, and if we don't want to break away from the title race, we need to get points against them. So here is a look at our lineup for today's game. As you can see, Lloris in between the sticks. It is a full strength back four lining up there. Lucas comes into the starting lineup with Ndombele, Lo Celso, and then Deli Ali and Harry Kane up front together. Deli Ali though, doesn't really have a full tank of stamina. So I want him to have a very impactful first half because... We're probably going to be forced into subbing him off. Now for a look at the Liverpool side. Alisson is the man in between the sticks. Trent, John Matip, Van Dijk and Alexander Kolarov. They signed Kolarov and they got Milinkovic-Savic. That is some impressive and interesting business. They got Jamie Vardy on the bench as well. Liverpool are going hard. Here we go. This is good. Yes, good. P ball down the line there. Lucas getting past the older Kolarov. I might just have to shot with him. We're going to have to have the shot. And Lucas! 
Oh, it was a tough angle. It's the only thing we could have really done. But Lucas, a golden opportunity to find the back of the net early. Oh, they've switched the play brilliantly there to Mo Salah. Chilwell needs to keep more of an eye on the Egyptian winger. It's still on here for them. Trent up against Hyungmin's son. No good balls into the area. Vinaldum back post. Oh, Roberto, you've got to get a better header away than that! Thankfully, it's a poor-ass header from Fabinho, but that is so bad. Come on. Deli Ali trying to feed this one through to Lucas. It's a good touch. We've got to abuse it down this right-hand side. Got to abuse Kolarov being a weak link. Going to try getting it in to Lo Celso. Touch! Harry Kane! No! Oh, no! Oh, no! Harry Kane! No, 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 no. How have we not taken the lead there? They keep trying to make something happen with Mane, but we've got him covered virtually. And that's a good tackle from Roberto, but they've ended up with the ball back at their feet. They're enjoying this little pocket, aren't they? Nice header away from Chilwell. Now, counter-attack potentially opening up here. We're going to go. Hyung Min Sun going there. I see that run down the right-hand side. Lucas, we're abusing it down this right-hand side. Kolarov, definitely the weakest link. I might just go, Lucas! No, he misses again! Lucas is finishing! No! Ah! Oh, good interception there, Lo Celso. Sloppy play there from Liverpool. We're going to go... And Dombele down the line here. Got to play it early to Lucas Mora, who is making all the options for us. But we're going to put it in. Tangai and Dombele blocked. Son. Ah! Liverpool on the attack. Fabinho going out to Mo Salah. Up against Chilwell, who's actually had a decent game here. Got to get the midfield back. Chilwell. They get their head up. Thankfully, it's saved by Lloris. So Liverpool just took off Virgil van Dijk and put Gomez in the back line. So I'm going to counteract that. Deli Ali absolutely knackered. He's played an hour. I'm going to put Bergevine on at attacking midfield. Good win there from Toby Alderweireld. Come on, lads. We've been the better side in this game. It's been a very cagey second half. Can we get something going? Oh, that was almost the ball. It's Korov. 89th minute. Liverpool have put a lot of pressure on us in this second half. They've had a lot of good possession. Mora up against Kolarov. Keita. They put that one deep. It's going to be a bicycle clear, kick cleared away from Kolarov. Oh, chill well. Kane couldn't win the ball. Blow the whistle. Referee. There it is. Oh, it's a tense, tense game against Liverpool, which has ended as a scoreless draw. But I've got to feel a little disappointed after all of the opportunities we had in the first half. In the second half, Liverpool definitely the better side, but players like Lucas and Harry Kane had an abundance of first half opportunities. We have received a transfer offer here from Chelsea for Toby Alderweireld, which is not going to be accepted. He has been a lot better in the past few episodes. Especially in that Liverpool game, he was great, but I'm going to reject that offer here. Manchester United have come in 23.7 million pounds for Lucas. But again, he's another one of the players that I do not want to sell, at least this season. I know he had a stinker against Liverpool in terms of the finishing ability, but he's a handy player to have as a reserve and for rotation. So no way am I selling Lucas. All right, so we do have the opportunity to go in for Nathan Ake again here, which I'm exactly going to do that. I'm going to do that. But I don't want to pay out of my ass for him. We can't afford to pay out of our ass for him. 21 million got me laughed out of the room last time. So I'm going to say 23? Is that going to offend anyhow? 23 for Ake. 31.2? You're kidding me, son. The uh, chief executive said no higher than 27.5, and I don't want to pay any higher than 25, in all honesty. Let's say 24 million, but I'm not liking our chances now, in all honesty. So we're going to say 24 million pounds here for Ake. 29.4. Eddie Howe, you are being a tough customer. In real life, I would say that's a good price, but not in FIFA. Not in this save. 25 mil. I'm going to say 24.5 here, but if it's 25 mil, 
That's the most I'll be able to do. And he has accepted it. Okay, 24.5 mil. I'll definitely take that. I was honestly expecting to get Eddie Howe laugh at us and walk out of the room again, but 24.5 mil has been accepted. So let's delegate the offer here, say 53.5K to 68K a week, and hopefully have Ake as a Tottenham player very, very soon. But anyways, before we get an answer surrounding Nathan Ake, we head just north of London where we take on Watford here, away at Vicarage Road. So here we go, Vicarage Road, a spot that has had some famous, famous upsets this season, most notably Liverpool losing their undefeated streak, but we're looking to come here and get the job done in what has been a jam-packed January. So here is a look at the Watford starting 11. Ben Foster, they got Jan Matt, they're rocking a four at the back formation as well. Who they have in the midfield? Chalabai and Biglia, who Biglia is always good in career mode. Is Maile Saad, Decore, and Gerard Delafay with Troy Deeney, who has been linked with Tottenham in real life, which baffles me, but Troy Deeney up front. And now for a look at our side here. We've been fortunate because we've had a week between this game and the Liverpool game, but I've had to prepare because after this, we've got crazy fixture congestion again. So for the most part, it's a full strength starting 11, but players like Zaniolo, Lamella coming into the starting lineup. Oh, they've slid it in behind there. That is not a good start at all. Off the kickoff. Watford have got the lead. Troy Deeney. Uh, he must have heard me talking to shit about him at the start here. That is a lazy start. We've come off the high of the Liverpool game. I overcommitted there with Alderweireld. I understand my mistake. And Troy Deeney fires Liverpool into the lead. Or sorry, Watford, in the, yeah, Watford into the lead. That is not good. Wake up, Jared. Wake up. They've gone into the corner there. Troy Deeney up against Alderweireld. They put that one... Where the hell is that one going to? I guess they're trying to go to that blow guy. Oh, it's actually worked out all right for them because they've gone to Jan Matt. They've got the header! This is ridiculous. <laughs> Watford, honestly, are playing 10 times more intense than Liverpool did. Maybe it's because I was more focused for the Liverpool game, more up for it, but Watford are on fire. Oh, that's over the top. Oh, what a save from Lloris. Come out and met that one beautifully. Saved what would have probably been a second goal there for Watford. Now we're down the line. Eric Lamella trying to get past Chalabra. He's got the pace. Eric Lamella might just have to have the shot here with him. He's going to go to Kane. Oh, no. Kane is at a shocker today with his touches. Oh, he's like a giraffe on ice skates at times. Win that one. Good stuff there. Come on, lads. We need to get ourselves back into this one before halftime. It has been a first half to forget for us. But it could be... Zaniolo, no, yeah, he got the whistle there. How can you call the whistle there? That's a joke. Zaniolo going there to Harry Kane. Ball being spread around. I want to get the ball through to Harry Kane. Get in front of it. No, what is that for a touch? Oh, Harry Kane, you're having a shocker. Kane going there. Zaniolo, I see Lascelles runs, but he just keeps going offside. Roberto. Going here, Zaniolo sliding it through, Harry Kane, touch, shot, goal! There it is! I've criticised him a lot in this game, but he's got the job done in front of goals there. Harry Kane equalising for us, and hopefully that is going to be the start of a successful game. We need to get back in the lead, we've equalised, game on. We've slid him behind there. So I'll get to it. Oh my God, Larice, what are you doing? All right, we are going to make a substitution here. It's time for 7-11. Seven on, Hyung Min Sun, Eric Lamella off. Here we go. Ball going down the line. Come on, Bergevin. He's got the pace. He's so much quicker than the rest of them. We've got numbers coming forward. Bergevin on the angle. It's cleared. Bloody hell. Go back. Oh, we've stuffed this up royally, haven't we? Los Celso, Zaniola, whoever you are, going through, in. Oh, Harry Kane went for the bicey. My God, how have we not scored there? Now they're coming through. Oh, no. Oh, no. They've gone in behind. And they've scored. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is not ideal. That is not ideal. That is not good at all. So, get there, Zaniolo. No, you've got to win that, Zani. Oh my god. Corner here for Watford. Delafayu. Got to win this header. Get to it, Lloris. Lloris punches it away in traffic. They get the ball back. Delafayu back stick. Get that, Toby. No, they've gone in the middle. We're going to lose this. We are a shambles. We are a shambles, but I'm honestly confused as to how fucking Watford, who got relegated in real life, have been significantly more difficult to verse than Liverpool. I don't understand it. Oh, we're a joke. We are a joke. Corner for Watford here. 94th minute. They've gone near post. They've got the header. It's been saved from Lloris, but my god, man, that's a game to forget. We're not going to get another opportunity here. I don't know what is doing there. We didn't make the most of our... Like, we weren't clinical. In the last two games, we weren't clinical. It cost us three points against Liverpool. And, I mean, it lost us the game here. That is disgraceful. What a bad performance. No news yet from Nathan Ake on whether he has accepted the offer or not. But we have received a transfer offer here from Villa, who want Harry Winks. But you can get out of the... Like, you can get out of my way, Aston Villa. There is no chance I'm selling Harry Winks. Transfer offer for Musa Sissoko. <sighs> Let's go negotiate with Sampdoria, honestly. So what's the upper range? 13.6. Sissoko's fallen down the pecking order. We've got so many more midfielders. If I want to do any more business in this window, I should honestly talk to bloody Ranieri. Let's see what he's going to say. I didn't realize he was Sampdoria manager. I mean, last time he was managing Fulham when we know how that went. But anyways, 13 million pounds here. He's going to say 8.8. .8. I'll bring it down for Ranieri. Give him a seniors discount. We'll say 11 million pounds there. What is he going to say? 9 million... So I want to accept that. Uh, yeah, we'll accept that. Nine million pounds for Musa Sissoko. It has come through. It is Nathan Ake, who is not going to be an important first team player. But you know what? I'm going to lie to him anyways. Nathan Ake is going to be now a Tottenham player. Let's go. Let's see what he looks like in the kit. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That is nice. So there it is, lads. That is visual confirmation of Nathan Ake's move to Tottenham from AFC Bournemouth. We have signed the Dutch defender for 24.5 million pounds, beating out a lot of clubs to get it sorted. And I'm absolutely stoked to have him at the club. But lads, that is where I am going to conclude today's episode of the Tottenham Career Mode series. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video. Subscribe down below if you're new around here. I will see you for the next episode tomorrow. It has been Jared HD here. I'm out. Peace.